Hello folks and welcome to Radical Algebra 1 Review. Today we are going to work with radicals because we need some rad algebra skills for our next chapter that we are going to be working on. So you need your notes, a calculator, a pen, or a pencil to take notes with. All right, we'll get started. First of all, we're going to look at what does it look like, a radical look like. Well, this is a square root, but the symbol that we use for the square root is called a radical. And then what is underneath the radical symbol is called a radicand. Okay, so the x is the radicand. This is a radical symbol. And there's an invisible 2 here. You don't see it, but it is there, and it's invisible. Okay, and that number right there that we don't put there, but it is there, is called an index. Now, if I'm not working with square roots and I'm working with cube roots, now my index has to be there, and I would have to write the cube root of a number. Okay, so anything over 2, and then you have to have an index there. But we do have it there, we just don't see it. So a square root, you don't need this 2. All right, moving on. We will be working with radicals or square roots this whole time. So we don't know, you don't see that 2 there, but it is there, okay? So this is what we're working with is the square root. This says the square root of 49. So what is the square root of 49? So if you type that in your calculator, what would you get? Yep, you would get 7. Because the square root of 49 is 7. Now what if the radical answer in our calculator is a decimal? Well, to be most accurate, we will not write decimal answers. But we will simplify our radicals. So the square root of 8, yes, in your calculator is 2.82 approximately, but we're not going to do approximations. I want exact answers. So we have to know how to simplify a radical if our calculator gives us a decimal answer. So the first thing you need to know is you need to know your perfect squares. What number times what number gives you... 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. So 4 is a perfect square. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 25. 6 squared is 36. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. 10 squared is 100. 121 is 11 squared, 144 is 12 squared, 169 is 13 squared, 196 is 14 squared, and 225 is 15 squared. You need to be able to recognize all these perfect squares through 15. Okay, so please write those down in your notes. All right, next, how do we simplify a radical without writing a decimal? Okay, you need to write this down and show all your steps so that we can have examples in your notes. So the first thing you need to know is you need to know those perfect squares. So hopefully you have them written down. If you don't have them written down, you should rewind and get those written down because I'm going to use those. So what I want to do is I want to take the square root of 45 and basically what I want to do is I want to find two numbers that multiply to make 45 one of them being a perfect square. So I want one of them to be a perfect square. So out of the list, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, which of them would divide into 45? Yep, you got it. It's 9. Now, is there any number larger than 9 that goes into 45? Because not only do I want a perfect square, I want it to be the largest one in my list. Okay? Nope, there's no number larger than 9 that divides into 45. So we're going to use the number 9. Now tell me, what times 9 gives me 45? 
Well, that would be 5. So this problem turns into the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Well, if you look on your list, what is the square root of 9? Well, it happens to be 3. So this problem turns into 3 square roots of 5. That is the simplified form without decimals. Okay, let's try the square root of 50. What's a perfect square that goes into 50? Well, that would be 25. How many times does it go into 25? Or 25 go into 50, excuse me? That would be 2. So 25 times 2 is 50. The square root of 25 is 5. And I'd bring down my square root of 2. Square root of 125. Okay, well, I could use... 125 divided by 25 is 5. So again, I'm using 25 times, this time 5, because 25 times 5 is 125. The square root of 25 is 5, and I bring down the square root of 5. Okay, this one says 5 times the square root of 32. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to work with the radical and break that down first. Now, if I take a look at 32, 4 goes into 32 8 times. But 4 is not the largest perfect square that goes into 32. So remember, you want to find the largest perfect square. The largest perfect square is the square root of 16. And the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 would give me 32. The square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of 2, I would bring that down. And then I have to bring down the times 5. So I'm going to bring down the times 5 each and every time. Now remember, this says times because there's no plus sign, so we're not adding. There's no subtraction sign. There's no division sign. So the sign that you don't see is the multiplication sign. I bring that down, and 5 times 4 is 20. And then I can bring the square root of 2 down. Okay, so that is the last example that you need in your notes. Um, hopefully you have some rad algebra skills now, and we will see you again later.